What's going on everybody? It's your boy True Champion Steven and we are back with another Vanguard Zero video for you guys today and boy oh boy is it going to be a special one. It's my first official deck profile for Vanguard Zero and I'm really excited. Unlike the challenge videos and unlike like the deck showcases and this is a deck that I'm actually playing on the ranked ladder as we speak and I stand by almost every decision that I've made within this deck and I'm really excited to show it off to you guys. If you guys are excited for deck profiles here on this channel please be sure to let me know that by leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel and clicking that bell for notifications so that way you guys know when my videos go live for you now without further ado let, let's go ahead and talk about what deck we're going to build today so guys as you can tell by the thumbnail and by the title we're, we're building garmor today if you guys remember in my best decks for set 2 video that i made a while back i said that garmor was going to be one of the top tier decks going into this format and i think i'm still right even though we do have the added inclusion of set 3 cards which do increase maybe the bad matchups in theory that garmor has like a deck like you know, Dimension Place isn't really the easiest thing in the world to beat. A deck like Pale Moon can be annoying, but I still stand by the pure defensive and offensive consistency that Garmore has, and I cannot wait to show it off to you guys here in this video. Really quick, I just want to get out of the way that deck profiles on this channel might work differently than what you've seen. The way it'll work is I will show you guys a deck. The list that I have right now, I will play one or two games on Ranked Ladder, depending on how many games I can get done, maybe three. And then, of course, at the very end of the video, I will show off the deck list again, but I will give notes on the deck list based on the performance that you guys saw earlier in the ranked videos. And I will give suggestions to you guys on possible inclusions or exclusions you can make if maybe your card pool doesn't match the same as mine. So there will be quote unquote budget options, but really it'll just be alternative things you can play. Certain cards like Gantzlot will probably still be a four of no matter what, but you know, Things like that I think will be helpful to you guys in order to kind of help make this experience fit to you just in case my personal deck choices might not fit for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the deck list. All right, guys, here we go. Here is the deck Garmore. I, con I contemplated calling it Paw Patrol, but then I was like, man, that's a little too goofy, but I might call it Paw Patrol in the, uh, in the, in the title, so that might be what I do. But anyway, guys, here's the deck list. Really simple. Let's get this out of the way. I'm, I'm running five stance and four draw. If you guys remember me talking about Royal Paladins uh, during the tournament report video, I talked about how I think stance are definitely the preferred trigger in kind of your beat stick paladins type of list. And I feel like while Gormer is not necessarily a beat stick paladin type of deck, it definitely has the same kind of weakness that the deck has in the sense that it can't really deal with intercepts too good. I felt like I was losing a lot of my matches to Mirror and to and to grand blue so i wanted to make sure that i had some way to possibly deal with rear guards while also kind of get like a little extra advantage over my opponent during my turn during my drive checks and i felt like the five stand can have that work you can obviously do four stand and five draw and i think it would be the exact same deck the only reason why i did it this way was that i wanted my draw triggers to be garmore and so making my draw making my stand triggers you know something else would be just kind of weird but i think 5-4 in any sense of the word of 5 draw or 4 stand is perfectly optimal for this type of list. Right now I'm going to do 5 stand because I want to be a little bit extra aggressive during my turn. Uh, first let's talk about the grade 1. So you have your 4 Flash Shield Assault and your 4 Snowgull in a Garmore type deck. If you guys do not know Garmore's effect basically is during your turn this unit gets power plus 1k for each of your Snowgull and Bruegel in play. When placed, discard a card from your hand to call a Snowgull from your deck. This is Vanguard and Rearguard. Very important to know that. And then all of your Snowgull and Bruegel get intercept. That's the most busted part about his skill. So the idea is that you superior call a bunch of Snogles and you have your, your one Brugel as your starter. Then you have a bunch of really powerful boosters slash attackers that can, all, that can become interceptors. So you basically have 13, 17, 18 interceptors in your deck, which is the highest amount any deck can run at this point in time. Unless you're playing Grand Blue and can use a bunch of them over and over and over again. Um, so that's the kind of idea of the deck. You use the power you gain during your turn to be very offensive and then you use the intercepts you gain during your opponent's turn to be defensive and you, and you make the game last a little bit longer and you use your consistent columns with cards like like palamedes and your consistent intercept snipes like you know blaster blades try and deal that like one to two damage every single turn and you kind of win this war of attrition and boom you win the game so that's kind of the idea of the deck it's very kind of resource based and at the same time kind of grindy um so there's not really a big like power play in the deck unless you do what i did and run soul saber dragon so a cool combo that i found was running two pongol the two akane and the two uh, soul saver dragon it's basically like a mini soul saver dragon engine uh the deck doesn't really soul blast so if you don't ride like alfred early here is supposed to be a fourth garmor i only own three garmor if you own four garmor get rid of the alfred early make it a fourth garmor deck's perfect um but there's a scenario where you can rewrite garmor use pongol add soul saver dragon to your hand use soul saver dragon's effect to give three of your rear guards plus 5k and then go for a gigantic push turn maybe when your opponent's at four damage and so if they don't get any triggers during that turn or even if they do you're thanks to the power you gain via soul saver dragon you could still 
hit through them. And if you check a stand trigger that turn, you can push them from four to six, very likely. So that's why the Soul Saver Dragons in the deck, it's basically like an extra finisher um, or like a, an actual finisher because the deck has no like final turn push power. It's all just gradual, gradual grind on your opponent's resources. So having a card like Soul Saver Dragon helps you kind of have that win button when you need it. Uh, and then finally, we just have the three Marin to round up the grade ones. It's a really powerful card. Uh, really good with Pinap with Palamedes. Probably the best ride in the deck. You hate riding Snogle. You never want to ride Snogle. I have ridden PGs before because it's really important to have as many Snogles as you can. Um, but Marin is by far the ideal ride. Uh, moving on, we have four Blast Blade, three of the uh, Primo, which is very awesome. We have two Akane, three Galatin, two Eagle Knight, and two Beast Knight Armor. Lots of two ofs, lots of weird numbers. I already kind of explained the Akane. It's really here for the Pong Gold and the occasional Superior Calling of another, of, of another Snow Gold. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, three Galatin just for like a good, consistent rear guard that can swing at stuff um, without the need for other abilities like Eagle Knight of the Sky. Plus, if you can't ride Blast Blade, you can ride Galatin and be just fine. Next up is two Eagle Knight of the Sky. It's, it's an 11k attacker. It's really good with the stand triggers uh, because if you get the 11k attacker off, you can clear an interceptor and then hit again if your opponent does not get a defensive trigger. And finally, we have two Beast Knight Garmor. It basically is the same thing as Hakane or as a calling of a rear guard of Garmor. You just get like another Snogle advance into play. And that's where his value comes in. I wish his skill was um was Vanguard rear guard gain power. That'd be super strong, but it's just Vanguard gain power uh, for each Snogle and Brugal. So riding him is like the best alternative if you want to actually hit for good numbers. Otherwise, he is just an 8k on the rear guard, which is why we don't run him at four of. And then finally for the grade threes, it's pretty simple. I, re I already kind of explained Soul Saver Dragon and Garmore is our main grade three that we ride on all the time. I have Alfred early here because I don't have anything else to fit, to fit in the deck. I would play a third Soul Saver if I could, I only, I only own two, but I think two is also the optimal number anyway. Um, I want a fourth Garmore. I don't own four. You know, if I get the fourth one, it will become a Garmore. I never ride it. It never comes up. If it does come up, it's cool, I guess. You know, I don't own King of Knights Alfred, but even if I did, I wouldn't play it because I don't like King of Knights Alfred in this deck. And there's that. I have Palamedes. He's like the best grade three. Four Royal Paladin. I also have three SP, which is pretty cool. And then finally, we have four Gancelot. Finally got my fourth Gancelot. I'm really happy about that. Now we're running with the four Heal Trigger Gancelot, most consistent engine in the deck. He's the reason why we, we play Blaster Blade, not Alfred Early. If I did not have four Gancelot, I would not play any Blaster Blade. I would just play four and then four and then like three and then like two. It's probably what I would do. But Blaster Blade plus Gancelot is really good just to help put your Heal Triggers back in the deck. So that way, if you draw them early, you can make the game last even longer. Uh, which is just super nice and adds a lot of consistency to your deck. It also gives you a good consistent grade to ride, which is really nice. I actually contemplated playing Lebregal over Brugal, but Brugal is just so good in the deck. Um, I, I use his effect all the time. Do note here, guys, that his effect is Counter Blast 2 Call of Brugal. It's actually Counter Blast 3 Call of Brugal. Even if it is a typo on the card, you'll still Counter Blast 3 every time you use the skill and not Counter Blast 2. So just know that when you want to use Brugal's skill that you can only use it if you have three open counter blasts and not two so don't get that mistake happen um i've seen people actually like like have an empty hand and move up move up their Brugal and then just like do nothing with it because they just forgot that they couldn't use this skill because they only had two face of damage instead of three so just know it's counter blast three not counter blast two it they should fix it like within the next few days so it should be no big deal uh eventually but guys that's it for the deck um you could play nine draw you can play uh you can play some i, I could see crits working in this kind of, uh, kind of list as well but i do i just think that stands and draws are the most consistent way to play Royal Paladin right now on Ranked. Um, but definitely mess around with it. If you guys want triggers or one of those things that like, it's really just personal preference at the end of the day. And I feel like this gives you the most advantage while also providing a little bit extra aggression uh, towards your opponent. And this and this meta is looking to be very aggressive based, based on uh, Razors and Tsukuyomi. So having access to a little extra aggression here and there isn't, isn't gonna be that big of a deal. All right guys, with all that being said, let's go ahead and see what this deck can do over on the Ranked Ladder. By the way, guys, this is a good time to mention if you are new to the channel and you did not know that I stream on Twitch, I do stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday over on Twitch in the afternoon, specific standard time, and I do all kinds of Vanguard Zero content over there. So if you ever want to come in, ask me any questions, or see me use decks like this on live ranked streams, by all means, come on in. We have an amazing community, and I would love to see you guys in there. All right, let's go ahead and hop into our first ranked game with Garmore. All right, guys, we got our first game here. It's against Grand Blue. Okay, so I was talking about how earlier Grand Blue can kind of be a tough matchup because they can just kind of accelerate defense like we can. And so it can be kind of hard for us to kind of push through them eventually in the late game. And they can just get good, consistent damage against us if we don't get our defensive pieces. So our hand is kind of cool. Um, I've all, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan right now in Royal Paladin of keeping PGs no matter what. Because unlike Kagero and OGT, you have no real way of just drawing cards or just getting access to your PGs. So I just want to make sure that I always have at least one in my hand whenever I can make it happen. So I'll just turn these two and hope for a good grade three. And we get Garmore and Beast Knight Garmore, which is a really good grade two succession because we can basically get two Snuggles um, just for free. 
uh, which is really cool. By the way, a cool thing about this deck is that you just discard your other grade ones. So cards like Marin just get discarded so you can get other grade ones. It's actually super cool. Plus, you can ditch grade threes and get grade ones. And now the grade now the grade threes turn into interceptors. Uh, so it's like super cool. And there's a Palamedes. Uh, not, not the best draw in the world, but I will happily, happily use him to kick some butt. Um, this is a thing, too, that I, I see people doing wrong. People always call their Brugal behind their Vanguard. Don't do that. Call it to the rear guard. It's always better as a rear guard because you want a better booster behind Garmor because Garmor gets to, like, 13, 14k. So having a much more powerful booster behind him, not besides Brugal, can help you get much more consistent numbers uh, with less Snogles. So having, like, a Marin or a Pongle behind your Vanguard and, like, one, one, two, three of your Doggos will help you get to 21k, which is very important to have as a vanguard number because then you can go rear guard van and then rear guard potentially if your opponent he sees no defensive triggers or even if they do you can still go rear van then attack under the rear guard you can go like rear and then rear swing face and then vanguard swing and then stand trigger attack a rear guard it's pretty cool the, uh, the attack patterns in this deck get a little wonky but they're pretty cool sometimes i attack unboosted a lot of times because of because of the stand triggers you guys will see there's some like little little neat things you can do to kind of optimize your play also i don't know why i'm not in overview there we go also, let me make sure that these are on for you guys. They are sick. Let me also... I don't like having these too loud, so let me just lower these for you guys as well. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sick, 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 sick. All right. So it's champion, blah, blah, blah. Nothing really matters. Nothing crazy here. Uh, he does ride the Samurai Spear. That's an important thing to note. So that means if he ever rides Spirit Exceed, it will be 11k. That's two Blaster Blades gone, which means we only have two Gar uh, Gancelots that are live. Good thing for us. We don't need we don't need to have him live anytime soon. So that's okay. Uh, this turn, depending on my top deck here, another Palamedes. Okay, so I will ride Blaster Blade. I will choose to call this Beast Knight Garmore and activate his skill. Be a little bit aggressive here, because I want to be more aggressive against a kind of defensive type of deck like this. So now with like with, with with this board, I can be like really aggressive if I want to. Like I can I can go swing, check a stand trigger, and, and do like three damage this turn if if he sees no defensives. And there's a defensive, so we're not gonna do any more than two damage. But I will still get to hit him for two damage this turn at least, which is really nice. Being a bit aggressive here is a little is a little good. Plus we get the interceptor uh, in play right away, so we can kind of limit our potential counter push damage next turn because uh, Grand Blue doesn't really go aggressive until like the late stages of the game, so. He's going to have to really extend here if he wants to try and kill my rear guard and also uh, deal damage to me. And next turn, I can just ride into my Garmor, call my Palamedes, and then I have three attacks. Two of them, one of them being an intercepting attack of a grade one with just the cards I have in hand and whatever I top deck. So it's going to be super exciting to see what our board looks like on the next turn. Let's see what my opponent wants to do here. If I check a draw trigger this turn, that'd be super huge. You know, you know, there's a lot of things that can go our way here and make it even more oppressive to our opponent. It's a Commodore Blue Blood. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Little little 10k boy. There's a Greed Shade. Okay. A little, little aggressive. Like it. Okay, just those two units. So we're not going to take more than one damage. Turn. Unless he's playing crits and or stands, which it looks like he's playing at the moment neither. But I'm assuming stand. Like any Grand Blue deck should be running stand triggers for the same reason that any Garmore deck should be running stand triggers. Um, If you want that extra aggression, the best way to get it is through stand triggers. IMO. And there's a child rank. Okay, so my opponent's list is definitely, I would argue, suboptimal. Um, but it's fine. He probably just doesn't have all the cards he wants. Not anyone was blessed with their pulls like some people were. I, I didn't get anything really for Grand Blue other than four Night Mist, which I, I, I wanted at least three Ruin, uh, ruin Shade. Otherwise, I wasn't going to play the deck. And there's a Hakane, so I don't even have to use Garmore's skill if I don't want to. I could also just, like, ditch the Palamedes. And you know what? I don't think I need Palamedes this game. Yeah, I got my doggos. So we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna yeet, yeet this, yeet this boy out, the, out my hand and then call Hakane and have a board just full of dogs, which is gonna be super cool. Oh, boy, I forgot, I forgot about this cool animation. Yeah, yeah, the Blizzard Formation, baby. That's what it's called in the anime, guys. The uh, Royal Paladins Blizzard Formation is, uh, is the name of this little strategy that we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and move Brugal up to the front. Mm. Well, if I do that, if I get a stand trigger. I, I, I can just swing with Hakane first, actually. So I'll, I'll, I'll just do it like that. Hakane will get the stand trigger if I get one. Make it a little bit easier on myself. Because I don't want I don't want to, like, re-stand. I don't, I, I, I don't want to risk Snowball dying. I'm not going to probably use Brugal's effect this game. So him dying first is fine. And there's the defensive anyway. So a stand trigger here wouldn't really matter. Unless I get a double trigger. And well, there's a stand. So we're going to, I mean, we're, we're, I mean we're, I'm going to go for it, obviously. And boom, do we get a double trigger, baby? Do we get the double trigger? <gasps> no, so close. If my opponent got the defensive, 
Well, I mean, he, I mean, two checks, one defensive. It's pretty likely that he gets one. So it was a little feels bad. We, 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 we don't get to be monsterly aggressive, but if he didn't get a defensive there, we could have hit him for another damage and pushed him to five on our first grade three ride, which in a deck like this is so strong, you guys. And here's like the real crazy part. Like, even if my opponent kills my entire front row, you're like, oh man, my hand's empty. I can't recall my board. Uh, my board's already on play for two turns. So now I just move up my, my snow goals. They reach 9k attackers. And if he doesn't call like a, like his 10k bases or his, you know, his ghost ship as his rear guards, I can kill any interceptors he might have. And then I can just swing in his face with my gigantic vanguard and always deal damage. So that's like the really cool part about this deck is that it basically is a board presence type of deck that literally has its board presence last for at least two to three turns, especially if your opponent can't aggress you. Like if my opponent can't get two attacks this turn, which you most likely will be able to get three attacks at least. He won't be able to deal any damage to me. And there's been moments where my opponents can just, just cannot deal any damage to me um, with this deck, which is pretty interesting. What I would really like to see this turn probably would be, you know, a Gancelot. Honestly, would be really strong because I could put a heal trigger back and then get a grade 2 and then have, like, um, a rear guard attack and then a boosted attack and then a vanguard attack, which could possibly deal, you know, the full 2 damage we need. Um, but, you know, I, I don't see this game going south anytime soon. I'm only at 2 damage. There's a Witch Doctor, so he's probably going to use his Samurai Spirit in the drop zone, I think. Oh, there's nothing in here, so I don't know why he's calling in the back row then. Um, just to call back a Greed Shade. Oh, he's just always going to call like in, like like the Greed Shade in front of the... Yeah, okay, yes, yeah, so now I see. Greed Shade in front of the Doctor. That makes a lot more sense than like having a unit in your drop zone that's not in there, right? Like there's no there's no Samurai Spirit in there, so I was like, oh, so he's just going to get rid of it? Okay, makes sense. And there's and there's the night spirit. Okay, so he wants to make sure that he. Oh, actually, I don't. Oh, okay, so now we can call the booster. I was like, why would he do that? Actually, well, now this is a really weird play to me because my opponent has to swing rear guard, rear guard anyway. So he, I mean, he didn't really need to boost his power because he's only gonna be able to get one attack on my vanguard this turn anyway. He must have forgotten that Bruegel is also an interceptor. Um, so he committed too much to the board now. So he, yeah, my opponent, my opponent just just, just overcommitted there, uh, which is interesting. Which is very interesting. Um, so that's a misplay, I think, for sure. Keeping like, I mean, like, obviously, committing grade ones doesn't really hurt you in this game. It just shows me that he has less things in his hand. Yeah, there he goes. He did not realize that I had intercepted my grade zero. That's really funny uh, to me. Let's see if he let, let's see if he plays stands. If he does, he can kind of mitigate this little misplay. There's a heal trigger. Though. That's three heals gone for him, however, and I still have all four of mine in my deck. So now, now I can actually heal during my turn, which would be kind of insane to deal damage to him plus heal myself which would be really nice now this turn really all i really want is a stand trigger so maybe i can deal a little extra damage um i wouldn't mind an extra attacker like my blaster blade now that's that's three blaster blades gone so i only have one left in my deck for against lot targets which is kind of sucky but it's okay because we're on even damage anyway and i have plenty of time to find a heal trigger this is an assault so i'm not gonna be able to commit anything to board this turn but honestly i'm kind of okay with that because i still have enough power to clear his intercepts and then still deal damage and so if I, if I as, as, if, as long as I don't check a stand trigger, it won't really be the biggest neg in the world. So while this formation might be lacking a little bit, I'm still going to be doing just fine. I'm doing everything I need to do this turn, so I'm not, like, behind at all. Okay, so there's our last blast, baby. We know he's safe. And there's a heal trigger, baby. Oh, you love to see it, man. You love to see it. We are officially so ahead of this game. Um, I will say, though, on the next turn, however, we're, we're going to get to that weird spot where, like, now we're running out of stuff. Um, because I'm, I'm going to be potentially out of snow goals. Um, that's when a turn like getting Hakane plus Pongol is going to be really nice. Or a turn like getting Gantz into Blaster Blade to kill one of his intercepts and then kill the other one with Blaster Blade would be really nice. That's why like, 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 the, like the deck has so many like neat niche ways to kind of just gain advantage over your opponent in the offensive. That like really one card can kind of shape the entire game. And having two PGs and only two damage at this stage of the game is really good for me. Because I could just pretty much swing, swing my Vanguard like once or twice by himself a turn and still be ahead. Um, so while potentially this turn, if my opponent can't clear out my doggos, we could be in a bad spot. I don't see it happening um, that badly. We have plenty of targets in our deck for at least one thing to attack. All we need really next turn is one or more attacker. Uh, and the whole deck is attackers, right? I kind of I've, I've talked about this a bunch already uh, during d during these videos, but like the majority of cards in your deck in Vanguard Zero are attackers, which is really nice. So there's a Night Mistle. Let's see what my opponent wants to wants to have happen here with those. And again, the worst thing that's going to happen to us this turn is just one damage. Um, especially since it looks like my opponent is not playing any stand triggers. 
So that's really interesting. So like it's moments like these, like my like when you're like when like when Grand Blue cannot just like Grand Blue just cannot deal with the intercepts of this deck because it has no way to actually retire rear guards. So that's why you, that's why you gotta play stand triggers. Um, and it's the same reason why I'm playing stand triggers in this deck, even though I do have Blaster Blade. Blaster Blade is a little a little expensive sometimes when you want to use cards like Brugal to accelerate your defense versus your offense. So definitely having those extra stand triggers to be your offensive power. And there's the crits. So it's officially plays crits instead of stands, which in this exact scenario is a little annoying. Uh, unless he gets two crits here and then gets a PG out of my hand. That'd be pretty cool. And there's a draw. Ooh, a draw and a crit's really good for him, actually. Helps his helps his offense. I haven't checked a single draw trigger this game, I don't think. I checked one. How did I check it, though? I think I just... No, I wrote it. Yeah, I wrote my draw trigger. I haven't checked a single draw trigger this whole game. And my hand has been dry because of it. There's a third assault, and there's a Marin. Okay, I would like to see that Marin to kill out the Night Mist, but let's see what we can draw this turn. I honestly just want a way to attack something. Give me, uh, you know, give me Outfit early. I'll ride Outfit early if I draw it, TBH. Because at this point, we don't really need Garmore anymore. Oh, Eagle Knight of Sky. Perfect, perfect. He can kill this, and he can possibly restand and attack again. So obviously we will be the ones not doing any damage this turn, but we have access to heal triggers and stand triggers, unlike my opponent, so we can easily rectify this kind of loss of exactly right there. So even though I was forced to attack his two rear guards with only the two rear guards that I had, I still get that third attack and that fifth damage is gonna be dealt. And my opponent is very dry on heal triggers, has probably none left in his deck. He probably has one in his hand if I had to if, if I was a betting man. Um and now we're just going to be ahead of this game and go for a game on the following turn. So my opponent has to spend everything he can to get defense. And uh, all I needed to draw is like an Alfred early and I can just kill his rear guards and attack him in the face. So I'm really looking forward to this. You seem qualified to be a pirate. That's pretty funny. I didn't know Goki said that. IGV Goki, man. Here's here's how it goes, baby. Garmore's coming. Garmore's coming. My opponent's taking his sweet time with his turn. I'll tell you what. I will tell you what. He's like, what can I do? Oh, is he kind of like using Basker? I don't think he has enough cards in Soul to use Basker, does he? Let's see. Rise to four, Soul Charge is five. No, he will not have enough for Basker. So he's going to go right to his main phase. No ride. I wonder what his plan is at this point because... Witch Doctor, if he doesn't call a grade two, <laughs> at least one, he's he's looking bad. It's gonna look bad for him. I'll tell you what. He, he doesn't. Does he not know that? It, wait, call this card. Okay, no, never mind. I thought I, I thought it called it the same rear guard circle. I think it used to call it the same rear guard circle back in the day. For a second, I was like, oh no, misplay, misplay. No, no, he's fine. He's fine. So now he gets one intercept. But now all I need is something that has at least 8k power, and I can I can deal I can deal the damage I need to deal. Uh, so that's an interesting choice by my opponent. But you know it's fine. He's got he's, he's got two attacks. One of them is uh, uh one of them will, will be lethal. But I have double PG in my hand. Um, assuming he has at least one PG in his hand, I can't be aggressive this turn and just call my PGs because I won't really get the extra damage that I need to actually push for game. So I will choose to kind of stay back a little bit in this game and uh, just see what I can top deck or and or get a draw trigger for. That'd be pretty sick right now. Can I get a draw trigger? Oh man, not him. I want the draw trigger. Don't give him more draw triggers. Dude, has he? He's literally gotten what? How many five? Four, five draw triggers, and he's checked all of them. And it's kind of ridiculous how much cards he's just, he's just drawn. So there's one Gustin gone. So we know there's one gone. Is there anything else that we know are gone? No, we only know one is gone. Um, so we have maximum three, which isn't good. And there's two of ours gone. Oh man, that would have been nice to see. Um, as it'd be a draw trigger, draw into that. Ooh, that would have been super nice. So we haven't, we haven't really gotten any lucky. Like, I've checked like three stand triggers, which is nice, but I haven't checked any actual, like, uh, advantage based cards. You know, I've been able to deal a bunch of damage, but I haven't been able to kind of do what I need to do to achieve a victory in this game. But we'll see what happens. Um, uh, the funny part is if I got a top deck of freaking, um, Garmore here, that'd be pretty sick, which is, which is my, which is my draw trigger. So that'd be pretty interesting to see. All right, we draw, and there's a, a Gantslot. Okay, that's perfect, actually. So I can right skip, use Gantslot's effect to add a Blaster Blade to Van, put a Heal Trigger back in my deck. I can call Blaster Blade, retire this rear guard, and then swing at his Vanguard and push him for that fifth damage, which is super strong. And I have another Heal Trigger back in my deck. Um, so I have three in there. Very good chance of checking one. And I could potentially have two attacks if I just check any trigger at all. So this is a really good turn. Um, ideally, we see a Heal Trigger here. 
Um, so that way we can continue our onslaught. There's a draw trigger, even better, honestly. Uh, we did not draw a heal, so there is a heal in the deck. And there's a small chance that we just win the game this turn if he doesn't have two PGs, which there's a small chance he doesn't have two. So I will swing at the face and see what happens. So my opponent did have two. We only only has maximum one left. So next turn we can totally win the game if we need to. But sadly, our defensive formation is lacking and we might lose this game. I said this earlier, guys. Like, Grand Blue's one of those decks where it's a hard matchup. And when they get all those draw triggers in the game, it doesn't matter. Like, if my opponent saw three less draw triggers, his hand would be empty. You know what I mean? Like, and he would have zero cards in hand. And if he had zero cards in hand, we'd be looking a lot better here. Um, I will say, however, that if he superior calls Night Mist, it won't really do anything. So he needs to still call boosters to it in order to have it hit. There's no Night Mist in here. Uh, he might just use Dragon and Dead Skull Dragon to try and push for damage this turn. But let's see what my opponent chooses to do. There's a lot of ways he could take this turn. And we still have three heal triggers in the deck, by the way, guys, which is more than a one-fourth chance pretty much of seeing it. So I'm feeling pretty confident here about our chances to maybe see a six damage heal trigger. It would be pretty sacky, but, you know, we deserve a little bit of luck on our side given how this game is gone. So let's see what happens. There's no guarantees, obviously, about anything. But how many, how many, eight, nine? He still has crits left in deck, but I do have a PG, so... If he is dumb about his attack formations, he could uh, he could risk stuff. So there's the there's the knight misto. He needs at least one more attack this turn, otherwise we're not being threatened at all. Um, so let's see what he chooses to do. He needs to call something that can hit Garmore. And if he doesn't do that, we're we're fine. We're sitting pretty. There's greed shade, which in this scenario does hit our vanguard, which is very annoying. Another greed shade. It was a ruin shade, would be the same thing, but. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve here. He's just gonna swing in my rear guard, makes sense. If he swings with his vanguard first, he's dumb? He should swing with his rear guard first because he does play crits, because he wants to force the crit damage if he can this turn and force me to check two heal triggers and see what he does. Ah, vanguard misplay. That's a misplay, guys. He, he, should, he, should, he should just swing rear guard first so that way he can uh, force the crit to be the damage that he gets and force two heal triggers, because the chance of me seeing a heal trigger this turn is very high, and the chance of him seeing a crit was also pretty high, I think. And so he should have played with that because that would have given him the best outcome to win. These are like little things that you guys can do to kind of maximize your potential to win a game. Obviously, they're a little luck based, but it's still the correct way to play. You don't lose anything for doing it and you have everything in the game. So let's see if we get this heal trigger, guys. It will potentially win us the game, especially since I do have the Galatin in my hand. So let's see what we got. He thinks he's super big and mighty and... Ah, that is a rip arena with cheese, guys. That was still a good game, though, and does show off the deck very well. If we just got a little bit luckier, check maybe one more heal trigger, check one more draw trigger, I think we would have actually won that game wholeheartedly. Uh, my opponent got just very lucky, and those are the kind of situations where, like, I feel like Grand Blue is a pretty on-par deck with this one. It's pretty much like a mirror match, honestly, if you think about it. And in a mirror match scenario, whoever gets luckier is going is to be the one that wins. So, but we're still going to play one more game with this deck and see if we can't turn it around. All right, guys, here we are for game two here. We're fighting against Kagero. Okay, so this should be an interesting matchup. Um, honestly, the way I see the Kagero matchup almost always finishing is I use Soul Saver Dragon to beat them. It almost always happens now that I've started playing Soul Saver Dragon. I'm actually just going to return all of these cards except for the one Marin. I could leave the Alfred early, but I don't want to. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a much better hand, actually. We have the potential to re-ride Garmore and get more and get more rear guards. So the way that we kind of win this game is we don't really just spam the board with doggos. More often than not, what we do is um we will uh use our doggos over time to kind of grind down our opponents. So for example, on this next turn, if I don't top deck, I kind of want to use Gancelot here to get a to get a but it's a little early to use Gancelot. And I have the I have the Galatine in my hand. So I can just I can just skip turn yet. Um we can use our doggos to just over time consistently rebuild our board, and so we're and so we're not we're not just gonna spam the board with doggos. We're we're gonna be a bit more consistent with how we play them, a bit more conservative about it, and then we'll probably play like one or two doggos every single turn. Is more how we're gonna handle it because this because unlike other decks, they have the ability to retire our back row, which can be pretty scary. Because retiring our back row gets rid of our offensive pressure and our defensive pressure, so we can't we can't give them too much value. Is the idea. That's right, Galatin. Let's go ahead and use Gantz a lot. Adding Blaster Blade to the hand. And I will just go ahead and call this Galatin. Hang on to the Blaster Blade so that way we can retire our potential intercept on the next turn. Swing at his face. There's a draw trigger out. We'd love to see that. Getting a Hakane, which is probably one of the best cards in this matchup. Um, I do find myself a lot of the time conserving my Counter Blasts for either Blaster Blade or Hakane because... Um, 
you know, Kagero isn't the most defensive deck in the world other than just like adding PGs to their hand with, with Kahanro. So being able to kind of get that extra damage against them by killing one of their intercepts is actually really nice. Also, it could be really good to, get, to kill one of their powerful grade threes. And then of course, having Hakana just for constant board consistency is going to be really helpful. So next turn, we actually have a really cool turn. I can ride Gantz, lot discard, Palamedes, Superior Call of Snogle, call Akane, you know, call Blaster Blade, and then just kind of swing face. My opponent's formation is very light. You know, no great twos in his hand. Really good. We can take a big advantage of that and just kind of harass his face this turn. And I'm looking forward to that. And there's a heal trigger. It's wasted, but it's fine. It's fine. Damage is even. On both sides, doesn't really matter. And we're going to get a big advantage this turn, especially if my opponent doesn't ride anything in particular. That's scary. I'm going to hang on to this Pongle because I can potentially use Soul Saver Dragon on the following turn. If I re-ride, then use Pongle, get Soul Saver Dragon. That's super cool. I'm going to discard this Palamedes and Superior Call Snogle. I'll call the Snogle. Where's the best place to put this thing? Here, right? Swing. Swing. Sw sw swing, swing, and then swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And what I'll do is, is I'll just save Hakane to rebuild that Snogle that's going to die in the next turn. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So that way, next time I can get two Snogles. Yeah, and then I'll call this Blaster Blade. No, no skill, because I can't. And then we're just going to swing at his rear guard, because this is a really powerful rear guard, especially if he, if he tries to counter push us and control our board. Uh, this case will go this face. It's a stand trigger, which is interesting. The power will go to Blaster Blade. Uh, in this scenario, we, I'm not being too aggressive. If I was being a bit more aggressive, I could have pushed him for potentially three damage this turn, which would have been super sick. And we do get a little lucky here and push him to five, four, sorry, four damage, uh, which is super sick. No heal trigger either. And there, man, all of his great are just hitting the damage zone, which which is a feels bad, man. Um, I feel kind of bad for my opponent. Like, he's probably just drawing, like, a lot of great threes and stuff. But that means he's going to get hit us really hard. He's going to hit us really hard. It's a Vortex Dragon. Okay, interesting. Vortex Dragon is not a big deal, as other great threes would be. Because, you know, he's a Vortex Dragon. He takes a lot of time to actually do any damage to us. However, if he does get Vortex Dragon off... That could be a big deal. But on the following turn, I can just, I can kind of just like push him for, I can just win the game next turn. Like, it, like honestly guys, if I just ride Garmore, discard whatever card on top deck, I can get a Snow Goal, I can get Hakane, I can get use Pongle to get Soul Saver Dragon, I can use Soul Saver Dragon's effect, and then I can hit him for three attacks, all of them being over the threshold for, you know, defensive triggers doesn't matter. But this is a heal trigger, so we're going to be a bit more conservative maybe, and I'll hang on to my Pongle combo. I will still re-ride and get the card and soul that way, but I'm not going to be as aggressive as I kind of said I was going to be. Speaking of Soul Saver, there's one of them, so there's only one left in deck, right? Or, or they're both gone now. No, we still have one left in deck, so maybe I should just try and make sure that we don't lose it, I guess, potentially on our turn? I don't know. I'm not sure the best way to go about that turn, if I'm being honest. I think it's, uh, how many cards are in his soul is a good question. How many cards are in my opponent's soul is a very good question. Because it's Because if it's a lot, how many is it? It's three. So if he re-rides, it's four or five. So yeah, it's impossible. Never mind. We're fine. So I can just I can just call this here. Skill. Superior call. Snowgull. And then I'm also going to call this. I'm a little worried about having this one. This one but he, he, he'll probably prioritize Snowgulls over prioritizing the Pongle. And the Pongle is the card he should be really afraid of. So this should be pretty good for us. 15, 18, 20. So we can go 15, 18, and then 20. All right, battle. And keep in mind, guys, he hasn't added a single bar to his hand. This is a, so there's a very good a chance that he has, like, four bar in his hand. Uh, I would not doubt it. I would not doubt it. There's a draw trigger. We will. We, 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 we need a trigger to hit this time. But that's fine. One trigger to push out some, some stuff. Nope, no. So no PGs forced out this turn, but five damage dealt following turn we can use we can use the power of soul saber dragon and get some really powerful attacks against our opponent uh utv goes to four damage this turn uh we'll, we'll, i'll be able to play around his ability to check a defensive trigger by using soul saber dragon's effect so uh we should be able to push for game next turn uh so he would need like at least three pgs in hand to survive so let's assume he has the three in hand and just play the best game that we can so i will still like you know promote snow goal have as much defense as possible in the following turn but he will be able to use Vortex Dragon potentially if he re-rides and then use it, uses his skill again. But I don't think he has any more Vortex Dragons available to him. He probably has like one or two in his deck still. Whether or not he draws them is up to him. 
So there's a blazing flare. Ooh, is he gonna use blazing flare dragons effect this turn? Oh, he, oh yeah, he's oh yeah, he's gonna clear our, our intercepts and push as much damage as he can a bit. A really good play would be to kill our Pongle this turn. Okay, so there's Akane. Does he kill our Pongle this turn? Is he is is he a smart egg? Does he kill Pongle this turn? Or does he kill Brugal just to deal extra damage? I feel like the correct play is to kill Pongle. And then just swing at the rear guard with Brugal. Because you're not gonna kill me this turn anyway. So he kills a Snogle, which is Probably the worst play, I think, in that he could have done. Because if he killed Bruegel, at least he could have attacked me three times. <laughs> and tried to kill me. But, um, I guess he just wanted to limit my board? I don't know. As long as we don't damage check our Soul Saver Dragon this turn, we should be able to push for a lot of damage on the following turn. Especially, like, if we top deck Blaster Blade. Wouldn't that be crazy? Wouldn't that be crazy? Speaking of Blaster Blade, there's a Gancelot, so we could have top deck Blaster Blade. Which would have been really funny to me. Because uh, if we talk that Blaster Blade, we just, like, win, I think. Like, we get just three attacks at his face. Oh, speaking... Oh, come on. Blaster Blade and a Grand Slam right to each other. That's kind of annoying. And Oh, baby. There we go. There we go. Redemption. My thy name is... Oh, no. That was my last Blaster Blade? No. Oh, that's a... That's a feels bad. Oh, wait, no. I, mean, I was in right base. I was, I was in right base. I was like, what? What's happening? <laughs> okay. So, this will be fun. All right, so I can do this. I can activate the skill of Pongle. Adding Soul Saber Dragon to the hand. I can superior. I can call this. What's it? Uh, Fifteen. Wait, can you, can you add power to yourself? I think you. I, I think you can pick himself. Yeah. So I'll call this here just in case he can't pick himself. And then we'll call this. And then I will call this. Retiring his intercept. And now he needs three PGs in his hand. And if he's got them though, he does have a very a very good chance of winning still, regardless. But let's see what happens. Soul Saber Dragon. What's it? Holy Charging Roar. Nice. Okay, so 26, 11, so 15. So we're just, I'm just going to swing this first because we do have stand triggers. And so if I check a stand trigger this turn, that'd be pretty crazy. Then we're going to swing this. If I get a heal trigger this turn, that'd be pretty great. Speak, speak of the devil and he appears. There you go. Solitary Knight Cancel Out. Way to be a god right there. And a PG. I saw no PGs this game, which is very frustrating. All right, there's another PG. Let's see if he's got the third and final one that he needs. Let's see it. Oh, baby, blasted bledo. Boom, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Way to go. Whew. The holy charging roar for the victory, guys. That'll be it for the game showcases of this deck. You guys can easily see how it plays. It has the ability to be both conservative and offensive if you need it. Um... I think that was a really cool turn, and I was really able to show up kind of what kind of what that can do with very little resources. Oh, I clicked retry. No, back, back, back. But guys, with all those games being played, and now you guys know the deck, let's go ahead and talk about kind of some of the final thoughts I have on this deck. All right, guys, so here is the kind of final justification for this deck, kind of what I think it's strengths are and kind of its weaknesses so the big strength of this deck is that it's very consistent you know your board is going to be very aggressive on your turn very defensive on your opponent's turn however there are some little things here and there that make it a little n not good in terms of advantage and in terms of pressure you know your ability to pressure your opponent is solely determined by how many rear guards you have so if you face a deck like you know uh, Kagero, that can retire your rear guards. Uh, if, if you're not smart with the resources, that can really hurt you. If you fight a deck like Grand Blue or Mirror Match, even that has a lot of defensive power on board that you have to get around, it's hard to get enough aggression to push the game to a game state to which you are kind of in the lead. This game, kind of, this deck is kind of the opposite of a deck like Razor. You know, Razor's is aggression defined. You know, they decide how fast the game goes. And they just go as fast as possible and they hope and they pray their opponent can't catch up. This deck is more on the lines of like, while it's not a, a solely defensive Wally type deck, it's more of like a, a helmet deck. You know, you put your helmet on, which is your snow wolves, and you just ram into stuff until until they die. Um, but that can be hard and really easy for your opponent to play around, especially if they have a really good hand like we saw with that Grand Blue player. He, he was just keeping draw trigger on draw trigger on draw trigger. So no, so, so, matter, so no matter how much advantage I was able to kind of stimulate on board and in damage, he always had enough cards to kind of give it back to us and counter push. So the idea with this deck that you want to make sure you keep in mind is that the goal is to achieve a kind of aggression, aggression based advantage over your opponent and less of a card advantage based aggression. And what sucks about that is that card advantage aggression is way easier to sustain than aggression advantage because aggression advantage can easily be countered by your rear guards being attacked or in this can or in, or in this specific case your, your rear guards being constantly 
you know, swapped out for other rear guards that now need to die. However, the main strengths of this deck are its ability to deck thin, its ability to board manage, and by far its ability to kind of create a game state to where it can, sorry, not, not a game state, create a, a turn to which it pushes for a final turn, having cards like Soul Saver Dragon. I really think this is a really powerful card in the deck, and the deck is lacking power in my opinion. Um, however, a list that I also thought of uh, was kind of like a Garmore Galahad hybrid, but I don't own any Galahad, so I couldn't build it for you guys. But I really want to work on that deck, so I'm going to work on getting some Galahads pretty soon, and maybe bring you guys an updated version of this deck uh, if I find that list to be a bit more consistent. And the idea of the deck, basically, I'm just going to tell you guys now, is that you run the Galahad kind of ride chain. You run four Snow Goals and like three to four Garmore and like no Beast Knight Garmore. And then you just kind of run Beat Stick Paladins and you have the ability to use cards like Galahad to force the game to an aggressive state early. And then late game, you ride Garmore for the extra defensive power that Snow Goals can give you to kind of outlast decks like Razors and for example, uh, Tsukuyomi. So that's why I really like maybe that deck list idea. I haven't figured out kind of the, the most um consistent conversion of cards because it's a like you have to run like a, a bunch of different cards and gal had to make it work plus you can run cards like uh lauren grin and soul saver dragon in that deck because that deck does build soul and it's a lot more consistent so i can like take out the pongles and the marins and just run the the four great one galahad you know I'm, I'm gonna work on the deck list guys and once i actually get it done i'll bring it back to you guys for another video but for now just just know that this deck has a lot of room to kind of tinker around with and have some fun if you don't have like if, if you don't have soul saver dragon you can easily run king of knights alfred you can easily run more palamedes you can easily run an alfred early slash kind of um lauren grin type deck where you have like powerful rear guards that can do cool effects and you can kind of gain advantage through retiring your opponent's rear guards and stuff like that uh this deck kind of just focuses on having garmore on Vanguard at all times, and then having neat little rear guards like Palamedes and Soul Saver Dragon to kind of push the game that much further for you. Um, I think 5 4 is probably the most ideal way to do it, but 5 draws and 4 stands will, will, will work just fine. Your mileage may vary depending on how you want to run this. Um, but guys, I think this is a really optimal way to play Garmore right now. I think it's kind of like what the best version of Paladins is uh, at this point in time until MLB comes out. And if you guys are interested in playing it, I definitely would give it a try. It's really good on ladder. I think I've gotten four legends with it already just by testing it and i'm really looking forward to playing with it some more um later this week guys i will release my razor deck profile i think i i have an idea with it that i feel like no one's tried yet that i want to try and show off if i can so i'm working on a lot of stuff for that so that should come out on friday uh like i said guys tomorrow will be the best decks for set two and set three video uh, that'll go live around the same time as this one. Uh, and you guys, with all that being said, that'll be it for this deck profile. I was really looking forward to doing a proper deck profile for Vanguard Zero, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions on how I can improve this experience for you guys, or better yet, leave down in the comments below your favorite aspect of this deck list. I think this is a very kind of unique take on Royal Paladin right now that I don't think anyone else has done. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I really enjoy this deck, and I think it's going to be making some big strides in the future. But with all that being said, as always, I have been your true champion, Steven. Always been to work hard, rest easy, and live well, and I will see you all next time. Peace.